friend and welcome to Ariel's Twilight Years, how to be a really, really, really old model. Now, over the last year, I've talked a lot about model safety and I'm aware that sometimes that has made some photographers feel a little bit left behind. And I think in the Me Too era, it's a very tricky thing to do because in sharing our stories, we obviously make some absolutely innocent men feel worried and anxious and scared of being falsely accused. So I thought it would be really useful to find a photographer who was falsely accused and talk to him about the impact it had on him and discuss some of the issues from his point of view. And I thought to myself, where will I ever find a photographer who was falsely accused of something like this, who's willing to be on camera? So I did some research and this is what I came up with. Hello, darling. Hello. This is my husband, Howell. Yes. And Howell, bless him, back many years ago, before we were together, but we were friends and we knew each other well, was falsely accused of sexual assault. I was. I know that you are much more private than me and you don't blurt your feelings out to the world in the way that I do. Oh. So can you explain to me why you are willing to do this? First of all, because I never have. Second, because I see this lied, no, oh, but what about all the photographers, whoa, what about all the people who are falsely accused? And having gone through it, I can maybe speak about it with some authority. And the conclusion that I come to is, despite what being one of the people who has been through it, I think it is a far, far smaller problem for the industry than the stress and hassle and assaults that models go through. Why do you think that? Simply the scale of the problem. Because this has happened to me once in a 20-year career. And it's horrible. Yeah. It has left a lasting impact on me. But it's mm. once in 20 years. Whereas I hear you and your fellow models when they come to talk to us. And every time in the six months since we last saw a model, she's had two or three new horror stories. Yeah. So you guys are getting this more often than once a year. Yeah. Whereas yeah. the photographers that I know of are getting it maybe once a decade. And that to me says that while these two things are both horrible and both problems and both things that we should try to eliminate from the industry, the thing where we need to concentrate our attention most is not the poor photographers who are falsely accused. When you see models talking about assault and bad experiences, it doesn't sort of trigger rage in you because you were accused once? No, I don't even think it would trigger rage in me if, if it was about somebody who I thought I knew pretty well. It would probably trigger suspicious caution, but suspicious caution is what I try to approach everything with. So even, yeah, you approach me. Well, even, ah! but even, even events which I was actually involved with, I, I, you'll hear, I have suspicious caution because my memory's not perfect recall by any means, and I know memory can be misleading, and I may have got the wrong end of the stick or not realised what was going on and so forth. But the plural of anecdote is actually data. I must have heard literally a hundred horror stories, at least, from dozens of different models. Sometimes with the same person that's had, sometimes with different people, but so often the patterns are recognisably the same. The ghastly, stalkery, abusey, incremental, trying it on, every suit is a little bit worse, all these patterns of abuse, it makes me think, well, I simply don't believe that you can all be making it up. To sort of explain to people who don't know your work, you're a professional photographer. Yes. How long and what's your field? Uh, I'm a professional fetish photographer. I've been shooting and selling the work for 20 years now. I've been full time as a professional without any other job for about 17 of those years. For someone looking at your work at the first time, what would they see? A girl in a ball gown and handcuffs is primarily what they would see. So one of the big things people say is there's never an excuse for the photographer to touch the model. And that is a problem in our particular field yes. because you not only are the photographer, but back then at least you were the rigger. So I you were doing be, all the bondage. I have to be the, the rigger and the stylist. Which well. certainly I think is something that puts you in a more vulnerable position yes. than the average studio photographer. Yes. Obviously it also puts your models in potentially a more vulnerable yes. position. Okay, so 
why don't you tell the story? So I was working with a model who had been doing a lot of work with me on the site and we decided, she asked me actually, if she could have a regular contract. Oh, did she? Right. So instead of just paying her uh, bit by bit yeah. on an ad hoc basis, she had a contract where I paid her for a shoot a month, basically. That's what she wanted. And so I wasn't wise enough at that point to say no to that. Sure. And I said yes. So this worked perfectly well for the first year or 18 months or so. But then I noticed that she started getting a bit more reluctant to do the work. She was perfectly happy to take the money, but she got further and further behind to the point where she ended up owing me a couple of thousand pounds. Right. She did still keep turning up to shoots, and when yep. she turned up to shoots, she was doing a reasonably good job. And I just thought, okay, well, maybe she's been through a bit of a rough patch or something. Of course, she's going to either make these up or pay, pay me back. And I had no reason to suspect that she wouldn't. We seemed to have a perfectly cordial working relationship. I knew this model as well, and I worked with you and her on a couple of occasions. And you noticed, and I had, that I liked her very much. Mm. But I'd started to notice that she didn't like anyone. Do right. you remember that making you nervous? I remember noticing it, but it didn't make me particularly nervous because I don't like anyone like that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't talk about them. No. Uh, but it's not that I am always effusively praising people. This sort of stuff... So it wasn't like a red flag to you? No, this sort of stuff kind of flows over me because I know some models are kind of nervous and they talk and sometimes what comes out is bad stuff and horror stories. And okay... Obviously, we're talking about, one of the things we're talking about is bad stuff and horror stories yeah. that I hear at the kitchen table when yeah. models are here. And so I guess I wasn't sensitive enough to spot she was bad-mouthing pretty much every other model that there was around, as well as all the photographers. Yeah, I remember um, starting to think, gosh, I wonder what she says about me. I found out eventually. Right. Um, <laughs> so the thing, the thing that I did notice, I noticed that she tended to lie about personal things when there was no reason to. And it's like, as an employer, it is immaterial to me whether or not you've got a boyfriend as a model. Sure. So I don't believe I ever asked, but she would go to ridiculous lengths to try and conceal the fact that she'd got a boyfriend. And the stupid thing is that I knew she'd got a boyfriend because when other models were around, she did talk about her boyfriend. Okay. So this was a really odd thing. So it was just like in the background, Bit maybe odd. would have stopped you inviting her to be best man at your wedding. Yes. But perfectly fine working relationship. Perfectly fine working relationship. Okay. Perfectly. At this point, she owed you some money. Yeah. What happened next? Uh, we went on a photo shoot in a location shoot in South Wales. Mm -hmm. And it was a couple of days and we stayed over for a night at my parents' place which I now very much regret because yeah, almost course. the only model they have met at that point yeah, was when later yeah. went a bit crazy. It's, it's horrible, isn't it, um, when you realise that you've let someone into your actual personal life who isn't trustworthy. It's, yes. it's very painful. Yes, yes I understand. Um, but we, we did some shoots by a waterfall, we did some shoots in the woods, we did some shoots by a standing stone. None of this was nude. No. That shoot went, it went okay. I got the impression very strongly on the last day that she wanted to go home and stop working and I could tell on the drive back that she was a bit I don't know agitated so one of the things that I now doubt about is whether I said anything or whatever but we'll come back to that in a bit sure so what then happened is that we got back to my to my house we'd been commissioned to shoot some pictures for a corsetry company yep. that were going to make a corset custom made to fit her right and in exchange for giving a kind of probably me maybe her the corset to shoot with the content we would shoot some publicity stuff sure. for them this is very normal yeah. and she'd failed to measure herself for this corset for a month okay <laughs> And the corset company had said, actually, it's better if somebody else sure. measures you. So I just said, will you please pop in? It will take literally five minutes. We can get these measurements done. I've got another professional organisation kind of waiting on this. Yeah. Content. yeah if if we just get it done, I've got a tape measure here. I can measure you. Let's get it done. 
So I did that. Mm -hmm. It will have involved getting into her personal space sure. to measure her, but no more so than I've been doing for the last the show. 18 months, two years or more. Yeah doing rope bondage. Yeah. So then she drove home, I know in a big hurry, she claimed she, she needed to go home and feed her dog, and I thought no more okay. of it. So after this, there was there was a gap where she basically, she, she then went quiet after this shoot. Okay. I didn't hear anything from her, and I started asking, you know, can we please book the next shoot, because you so owe me she, yeah. two and a half thousand pounds at this point. Right. What's going to happen about this? I'm not really happy paying you the next payment. Sure, no. Until... Because you're just getting her further I'm just getting further into debt. Yeah. What, what, what is going to happen? How are we going to sort this out? And I even said, look, I think she'd got some story about having a heart condition. Yeah, this is the point, yeah, this is the yeah. point at which, in the industry generally, she'd started telling people that she was going to have to retire because she was sick. Yes. I heard some of this by osmosis that she probably did get back to me. And I thought, gosh, well, poor girl. I, it seemed I had, awful, yeah. It seemed she was awful. She's in her 20s. Yeah, so. I had no real reason to doubt it. So I said, OK, what do you want to do about this outstanding debt? I don't mind if you want to come and do the shoots. If you can, that's fine. Or if you want to pay me back, you can pay me back at whatever rate you like. You can pay me back at £10 a month. I don't care. Yeah. I just want to agree with you what we are going to do about this debt. Yeah. I'm not going to pay you any more money until this debt is cleared. Would you prefer to do the shoots or would you prefer to pay me back at whatever? And uh, I don't remember exactly, but there, were, there was an email trail. There were, yeah. there were a lot yeah, of emails. Remember. Somehow nothing was possible. A mode of communication sort of changed. And I ended up with a literal physical printout of emails this thick right. about it. And I know that they were this thick because she suddenly claimed that she didn't owe me anything. She just claimed she didn't owe me anything. Oh, God. OK. And I thought, well, given that there's this... You've this, been discussing you it. Yeah, we've been discussing this now for like two or three months, probably after this shit. Yeah. Oh, uh, how can you possibly suddenly claim that you don't owe me a... I've paid you the money. We've talked about we've it. We've talked about it. We've been talking about it continuously. Where has this come from? And I said... Well, that's not acceptable. And in the end, with a few more iterations, I said, look, I'm sorry to do this, but you do owe me this money. And if you don't make arrangements with me to deal with it, as I've been offering, trying to get you to do for months now, I'm going to have to launch proceedings in the small claims court. Yeah. Before I launched the small claims proceedings, yeah. uh, but when I had threatened to do so, I got a very peculiar letter... <laughs> Yeah. from somebody who was allegedly her lawyers. It sounded nothing like a lawyer's sounded, letter, no, ever. Uh, indeed, it said, you are very well aware of the circumstances under which Miss Blah had to stop working with you, and if you proceed in pursuing this debt, we will be forced to take matters further. So I had this thick page of printouts, all the bank statements, all the correspondence with her, the works. I sent that in on, like, a Thursday. The next Monday... I turned up at my studio and was arrested by the police. What did you think they were there for? I had no real idea. I could not imagine. Did they tell you what nature of offence you were being it arrested? It was something to do with allegations of sexual so, assault, oh, stroke, gosh. harassment. I found out later that they'd also gone to my house and they'd taken out quite a lot of like printouts of bondage photos what, that I had. What? They'd been in your they'd house? they been in my house when I wasn't there, yeah. What? So wh when they arrested me, they also went to my house and they seized computers and things. Oh my God, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they, they, they'd actually broken into our house um, and Jesus. seized a bunch of stuff. But I knew nothing of that because I'd been carted off to the cells. And the people who, who did this were perfectly civilised. I remember you said, they said, we don't have to handcuff you. Yeah. And you said, no, I don't think no, so. And no, I just no. I remember being so glad that they hadn't handcuffed you. It just... Yeah, I said, look, I've got a model travelling here to shoot with me today. Please can I send a text message to this model so that she is not going to show up here. Sure. So I, I managed to cancel the shoot. She was on the train and she turned around and went home. But then I got carted off to the cells. Perfectly friendly, explained that I was on medication and that I needed a decent amount of water. So they made sure I had plenty of water to drink. They confiscated everything, so phone and diary and things. But I managed to sneak a look at the diary. Because when they booked me in at the desk, they told me the date on which this was alleged to have happened. Because until that point you had no idea who. I had no idea who. No, no, no idea, idea, who? No idea oh. what this was about. No idea. Fortunately, let me just... Yeah, I, no, I, I managed to flick through. And I thought, okay, I that was the shoot with that model, 
at least I know who is making this accusation. And at that point, actually, I kind of relaxed. Because you knew what her motivation because would be. Because I knew that there was a paper trail that I'd literally launched small claims court proceedings against this person a week ago. So were you relieved because if it had been someone else, you'd have been thinking, God, what did, what I, did do I do to her? At That's this true. point, did you just wish that you were a photographer of anything other than tied up women? No, okay. no not particularly. Because <laughs> it, it does seem like all the things, it looks a bit like sexual assault. Well, I guess so. But honestly, I would probably think that much more now than I did then. Okay. Because I actually, I think... Although in many ways the climate's improved for kind of sexual liberation, in this particular instance, I think it's got significantly worse right. so actually, in the last 15 okay. years. So, yeah, knowing that at least I could stop with uh, self-doubt of who was it, what did I do, how have I managed to make somebody feel this bad that they've had to go to the police. So at least I could stop that. I could think, OK, I know who this is. Pretty damn sure that the accusation is false. And the timing of this is not subtle. She has not been clever here. Because if she'd put in the accusation before I'd launched the small claims court, yeah. <laughs> she might have had a much stronger case with the police. But she wasn't smart enough to do that. So, so obviously you didn't want to pay for a lawyer, absolutely understandably, because probably no. you had to pay a cancellation fee to the poor model who'd be halfway to your house, or you had to reschedule. Uh, yeah, I did. I was paid a fee. So you waited until you could get a duty, duty solicitor. solicitor. Yes. Okay, so that was um, probably a while. Yeah. And then did you speak to the solicitor? You speak to the solicitor first, okay. because that's the point. I was in the prison cell for uh, half a day. Roughly. Oh my gosh! Yeah, yeah, so I, I got arrested first thing in the morning, and this happened, it was late afternoon probably by the time this happened that I got to speak to the solicitor so I'd had a pretty unpleasant morning in the cells and what I was actually thinking is I was thinking of lots of strategies of how I could somehow keep the business alive if I were to be tied up in a trial for a year or if I were to go to prison or something if I would go to prison I thought oh well what I could I could brush up on my quantum field theory if I have to go to prison or something like that because that's the way my mind works so it, it just rolled out lots of contingency plans to make it feel a bit more under control I guess. So then the duty solicitor he had already spoken to the interviewing officers okay and then he came to speak to me. So did he know more? So he knew much okay. more about it than I did at that point, knew much more about the accusations so he checked on a couple of things with me. He asked did my work involve anything to do with biting insects or crushing insects? Absolutely not, really. <laughs> not at all, not at all. That was the one that stuck out in my mind a bit like, it really doesn't. No, you can, I am very confident that if you go through every picture on my hard drive, you will not see any such picture. So, okay. So it was already like, okay, that's a bit off kilter. I don't know what I was expecting, but I wasn't expecting that. So then I went in and was interviewed by two female police officers who it later transpired had been the two police officers who'd gone and interviewed this model first. And that's interesting because I guess... There's possibilities for abuse in that system, but there's also the possibilities for the police officers doing the investigation to make their own minds up as to whose story is the more plausible. Because they're both listening to because both. Because they're both yes. listening to both. And so what she was accusing me of having done to her was sexual assaulting her while I was measuring her for this corset. OK. But it wasn't just that. If she'd been smart enough to restrict the accusation just to Sounds that... Sounds quite plausible. When it was a he said she said I don't know maybe she would have got away with it but I don't know that she would have got away with it quite easy but she couldn't resist the urge to sort of embroider so because I would have doubted myself thank god most horrible people aren't smart yeah so thank god she wasn't smart so it turned out that she was accusing me that on this shoot in South Wales I'd forced her to stay tied up while I'm photographing her while she was being bitten basically to death by mosquitoes and insects was she saying that was sexual? So she was saying, yes, about that because I was a horrible sadist man, oh, that God. I was sexually making her suffer in an unprofessional way by making her stay tied up. So they, they kind of went through with me what the procedure was for tying someone up and photographing them. So I did. And they said, well, what would you do if the model was being badly written? I said, well, I just stop. I mean... <laughs> 
I mean, you just would. It is no use to me to get photographs, even stepping back from the... Absolutely. ...the professional and actually. I don't want photographs of a model covered in mosquito bites. It's a million hours to Photoshop. Yeah. But, like, it's a stupid thing to do. If a model had complained that she was getting eaten to death by insects, I guess I might have said... Let's take one or two more shots and finish. I can see I might have said that. I can see you could, yeah. But I'm not going to say more than that. No. That accusation was just utterly baseless. Yes. And I think my incredulity must have just come across really strongly to the police. You did what? No, of course I I did. I remember very clearly saying I did no such thing. I I just (laughs) didn't. I just did not do that. And as I said, like, it was lucky that that was such a preposterous accusation because still to this day, I know that that... Uh, some of the other things she accused me of, there might have been some way that she could have misinterpreted, but that was just flat out not true. Yeah, and that must have been quite comforting for you. Yeah. Because yeah. it's easier, if you're having to sort of argue a nuanced case, yeah. where well, it happened a bit like that, but it wasn't meant like that, is much yeah. harder than... No, that didn't happen, I didn't and I can show you pictures yeah, of her. I've, I've literally, I've got the pictures. Like that. Yeah. So I said to them, like, I've got all the pictures from that shoot. Yeah. You can assess for yourselves how many mosquitoes there are in the shot and whether or not she's got lots of insects biting her. I am sure that you will find that she does not. It's one of the things I just want to interject quickly. I remember, because we were friends, and after this happened to you, you phoned me and we met up. And I remember one of the things that just told me it was nonsense. A lot of things told me it was nonsense, but one of the things was, like, I have been sexually assaulted. And hearing that story, the idea of me going to the police and saying, he sexually assaulted me and he gave me a really horrible lunch. It's like, exactly. you just yeah, exactly. wouldn't. You just wouldn't. When you've actually gone through something as horrible as having someone's hands on you in a way that you didn't want, you don't even remember the other things that yeah. weren't ideal about the day. Yeah. It was one of the things that struck me, like, she's over-egged this. Yeah. And thank God. And thank, thank God. God. Yeah, thank God. Okay. Um, so that, did, that you was... get, did you get the impression they were believing you? I have no idea. I can't read people. Oh. I have absolutely no idea. But I, I didn't care because... Although, physically, obviously, the thing that matters is whether the police believes me. What matters to me is whether I believe me. So the thing that worries me is, and still to this day that worries me, is did I do anything wrong? And because that accusation was so ludicrous, I just plain knew that that wasn't true. And there was no nuanced, subtle way of this being a misinterpretation. This was just flat out false it was a false accusation and since that was one that they have opened with i felt much better so then they said that the main kind of meat of the sexual assault was this corset measuring and she had claimed that during the course of this i had said for i want your tits for i want your pussy and again i said i did no such thing i think now any of the models who know me very likely will find that ludicrous. I'm fucking touch phobic. I hate touching any other people. And you and really, really can't, I mean, you really hate dirty talk. And, and I really, really I've I, never said this to me. No, I, I, I really <laughs> struggle. So, particularly the floor. And you know what? I remember you telling me that, and I thought, that doesn't sound at all like Howell. It sounds exactly, exactly like, like her. her. Yeah. yeah, exactly like, like her. That's the sort of thing she would say, yeah. and it's the sort of thing... I mean, at the time, I'd known you for maybe three years, and we'd worked together a lot. And we weren't in a romantic relationship, but we were friends, and I'd never heard you say a thing like that. No, not, even, not even as a character on not video. Not even on screen, no. Yeah, I would struggle to say that line as a character on screen. The two saving graces were, one, by this stage, I was sure of my ground. Again, if she'd been subtle and said that I'd made her feel really uncomfortable and I'd subtly mm. touched her up measuring for the course, I might have thought, Christ, I didn't mean to, but I, I totally But I suppose might. I measured her, yeah. Yeah, I measured her. This woman has been naked and I've been in her personal space sure. tying her up once a month for years. Yeah. I spent hundreds of hours in that situation. Yeah. It's entirely possible that I might have accidentally brushed a nipple or something. I certainly didn't try to. No, no, no. And I was pretty sure I didn't do so accidentally. But again, the thing that is sort of the saving grace is that 
What I definitely did not do is say four I want your tits, four I want your pussy. And I you didn't. didn't tie her up and go, ah ha ha, you're being bitten by mosquitoes, no, I'm going to photograph it. No, no, I didn't do those things. Those specific accusations were flat out false. I never did those things. So then once they addressed the accusations, they asked me sort of for my side of the story. And it was interesting how much the tenor of the room changed when I said last week I launched a small claims <laughs> Court yeah. against her. I've got a stack of paperwork this thick <laughs> that Jesus. she took money on a regular contract for work that she didn't do and she's now claiming she didn't. I had to launch the proceedings in order to resolve this matter because I've been trying for months. They kind of wound down the interview. The long and short of it is they completely accepted my version of events. So she didn't get charged with like wasting police time no. or anything like that? No. Would you have been able to? Did they offer you the option to I don't recall. prosecute her? So no. at this point then do they tell you you're not being charged? Yeah, they. that's right. So I th I'm, I'm not entirely sure of the technical, but I think you're right. I had been interviewed. You knew it wouldn't go any further. And they were releasing me without charge and they had a sort of more informal debrief with me oh. after that and it's interesting that it clearly became the case that they did not believe her story had they believed her story before i they don't saw think they right. had actually i think because again it's like there were these lurid details mm. that i think probably as you said if you've interviewed some genuine sexual assault cases this does not seem like they don't no. talk like porn stars about what happened to them. <laughs> no. Um, and so they actually gave me some advice. I mean, the advice was well-meaning, but laughable to anyone in the industry. They suggested putting CCTV cameras all over Whoa. the studio and dressing rooms. It's like... Nothing would get nothing you blacklisted. Nothing would get you blacklisted quicker. <laughs> Did you know he's got cameras in the dressing room? Yes. <laughs> Jesus. So, uh, I, so I, naive. I, I like, kind of them. laughed at them and said, like, 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 you have no you idea. Have no <laughs> idea. You have no idea. That was... Um, wow. so, but what wow. I did do, I mean, it's not to say that this hasn't had a lasting impact. I wanted to ask you, yeah. Um, because leading on from that, one of the lasting impacts is that I have always, since very early on, the first time I had somebody to help at a shoot, I have always liked. Having another pair of hands and another pair of eyes is very useful artistically, technically, particularly from a safety standpoint. Mm -hmm. But it also means that if there is another person present at the shoot, you are much less likely to be in a he said, she sure. said situation. Actually. So it is actually an insurance policy for the photographer to have somebody else there. And is that, did the police, I think the police suggested that to you they as an option, probably, they? they probably did when I said CCTV was not going to yeah. do it. And so since that time I have been reluctant to shoot with models on my own. And you I have will, done it because sometimes it's been necessary because I'm away yeah. sometimes. But there is always just the little thing in the back of my mind. I certainly wouldn't do it the first shoot with any new model. No. You'd rather have someone else there? I, I would only do it I guess with a model who's been around in the industry for years who I happen not to have worked with yet. Who maybe works in this field. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so like... Because you'll understand the level of contact expected. Exactly. So, so, yeah. so a bondage professional traveling model who's been being tied up all over the world for the last 10 years yes I will probably do that and I will do it with models with whom we've worked regularly but I try not to do it if I can avoid it so in the short term did you think perhaps you had lost your appetite for it altogether uh, no I don't think I did then oh, it's, kind of, it's, it's much later on that it's had an impact it's like it had a lasting impact on my level of comfort I think with shoots. It was the loss of innocence moment. The effects were that I continued to this day to have nightmares about it. I continued to this day to doubt myself. And I don't doubt myself. I didn't say for I want your pussy. I but I was aware on that shoot that driving home she was quite agitated. Yeah. And I still don't know what that was about. I have a vague feeling that we might possibly have talked about boyfriends or something like that. Or I might have asked something that made her think I was asking about boyfriends that obviously she had to be in a bonnet about. Yeah. She was definitely quite agitated and anxious to get out of the house and get home, whether to feed a dog or because I'd made her scared. I don't know. But still to this day, I doubt whether I, when I'm driving, I'm a bit distracted and I might have asked something or said something that came out wrong. That was enough to make her angry enough to think, 
right, well, I'm not going to work with him. And then when you said, well, you're going to have to pay me back then, she was still pissed off enough to yeah. go, right, well, yeah. I'll accuse him of assault. Yeah. Pissed off enough or upset enough. I worry that I did something wrong that triggered this situation in the same way that I guess a lot of women have of the self-victim blaming really yeah it's I like guess it if isn't only I hadn't, it? if only I'd not worn the hot pants or whatever yeah you know? as you said it was very lucky that the police believed me so I never yeah. had to go to court you didn't have to have months of worrying months about of it months of worrying about it didn't have to lose my business didn't have to have a year waiting for it to get to trial I'm also very lucky that lots of people in the industry knew this model and it transpired <laughs> several of the other models I work with fairly regularly had been routinely asked by this model oh come over come over we'll have a barbecue we'll have a party and they would show up and she wouldn't be there yes I had heard these stories so also. on me she'd claimed to be ill days before an occasion she abroad I only lost an airplane's flight's worth of money she did it to me as well. Yeah. Oh, well, not to me, but to my photographer. She just yeah. didn't turn up at the airport. Yeah. Oh my so God. So for I me, forgot. I had a little bit more notice than that, but not enough notice to do anything about it. Fortunately, there were other models on the shoot. She so can't do that. I for completely forgot, yeah. but yeah, she did it to someone else I knew um, as well. But the thing that really ought to, but doesn't quite, intellectually, this puts it to bed, Yeah. but emotionally, it doesn't quite is that she made an almost identical accusation of sexual harassment and assault against the professional photographer at another big company that had been persuaded to take her on on a regular contract as a photographer. Please. She did the same thing within yeah. weeks to this other poor, professional, respected photographer who, like who you, has gone on to have, to have absolutely, absolutely unblemished yeah. There is nobody I have ever heard say no. a bad word about he didn't do that no. and the boss of that company kindly exchanged emails and said that he also he'd written off the money that he paid her in advance for work he didn't do because he richer than me i probably could have written off the money but like bloody hell no it's not it's, it's not okay because you, you've got you've gone from saying yes yes i'll do the shoots i'll pay you off to suddenly saying i don't owe you this money yeah. that's not on did she pay you the money she did <laughs> How? So How she, did that happen? I got another letter from her, quote, solicitors, saying that she was not accepting liability, but, oh, she couldn't face going through all this in court. Uh, so she was suddenly paying so up. So she was suddenly paying up. And I thought, fine, I don't care about you accepting liability. No. At least I've got my money. This is a ridiculous... You could use it to pay someone else. Yeah, exactly. It's a ridiculous charade to force me to go through. But there we go. You could have avoided all of that and paid me back a ten quid a month yep. if all you been is halfway reasonable. This did shake my confidence. It did shape my workflow. It does to this day still make me examine my every utterance to models to make sure that I'm not being sexually inappropriate, that I'm not pestering them about have you got a boyfriend and all of this stuff. And it's on the background of knowing that my behaviour of these sorts of things has changed a bit over the years. And I posted fairly recently on Twitter about stuff that I did when I was briefly in an office job at age 21 and participated in kind of sexually bantery group chats and emails and things of a thing which I think is, is relatively normal. I, I think it really was. It, it probably was, but, but, but nonetheless, very... I am thoughtful, I feel ashamed of that. Even if I was just participating in something that other people were doing, I wasn't smart enough then to think that I shouldn't do it, I wouldn't do it again. That was a learning experience for me, and I still feel bad about it, but out of it has come a modification of behaviour. And the problem with this is, I still question myself, is there some modification of behaviour that I should have done as a result of this that would have avoided the situation? And I think the answer is no. This person was a bad actor. She was yeah. horrible to everybody in the industry, in every aspect. She lied left, right and centre. She led people on that, if you come to my house, there'll be a barbecue. and not fucking be there. It's just, yeah. it's just the I actions know. of a loon. Well, yes. I mean, she stood us up, didn't she? When we were all going out to an event. Oh, God, I've forgotten. She, she didn't turn up. Yeah, yeah. Just, last minute, just didn't turn just up. Just didn't turn up. She had a long history of that. She did. So, like, in my head, I tell myself that and I know it, but in my heart, there's still this kernel of, did I make her feel so uncomfortable? that she wanted? I, I don't think so, but I but can't you... get over the feeling. Well, obviously, we've talked about this over the years, and I remember it happening at the time, and yes. I remember just utter horror. 
and it makes me so angry for you because well I remember I wrote you a statement at the time to you support you your um, yes. small claims yeah. case because I just knew you hadn't there are some of my clients and ex-clients who if I heard a story like that I'd think God, I'm, I can see that could be possible. And I just knew this is nonsense because I know him and I know her and I've heard her lie, yeah. basically recreationally. Mm -hmm. I've heard her talk about photographers who I think are lovely and she's got a, not a nice thing to say about any of them. I've heard her talk about models who I think are lovely and she hasn't got a single nice thing to say about them. She has gone through best friends at a rate of one every six yeah. months. Yeah, that's true. She has talked about me behind my back as a brutal sadistic rigger who hurt her on a shoot. This is the opposite, yeah, the opposite, the opposite. of what could possibly yeah. be the case. And it made me so angry, and it makes me so angry now, that it would have any sort of chilling effect on your confidence. Mm. Because I know that you are never someone who assumes you're in the right. You always consider the possibility that you're not right. Mm. She did that to someone who already worries. Mm. Obviously she wouldn't have cared. But, no, 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 um, clearly not. No. <laughs> but the fact is that she disappeared from our industry, and the industry is better for it. Because I think, I think true, yes. she would have done it again. And she, yeah. she probably has continued to do yeah, it again. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think it will always make me sympathetic to photographers when I hear this sort of thing. I will never just assume, and I know both of us, maybe partly as a result of having gone through this, we would never say you should just believe the victim as a blanket but statement. Because if the know, police had just believed the victim... Yeah, because you don't know who the victim is, is the point. No, But no. that also doesn't take away from the fact models have... 10 of these stories a year and photographers have one of these stories every couple of decades so you still have to update your prior probability of who the victim is likely to be seeing both sides of it by both being in the industry by knowing just how unrelenting the number of bad experiences models who we're pretty sure are not liars no report over and over and over again so the reason that I keep appearing on these things and trying to be as good an ally as I, as I can is that, yes, I know how bad it was for me being accused. It was pretty horrible, but really things could have been far worse. And some of the situations that you have been put in, things already were far worse. Like you actually did get people handling your body in a way that is not acceptable. You do get people treating you like absolute sex objects and that is actually worse than being falsely accused of something particularly when you could demonstrably prove that the accusations were false so if you could briefly give photographers any advice is there anything you tell them i think your advice is probably the best the advice is to think of this like you are booking a male plumber you're booking a model for a photo shoot. you are booking a professional with you to do a job. If this is not something that you would say to a plumber fitting your bathroom, strongly consider not saying it to a model. If you would not come up behind your plumber and pinch their bottom, don't do it to a model. It's as simple as that. Regard the sex that they're projecting on camera as separate from the human being who is a professional contractor here with you, doing a job with you or for you, if you are afraid of false allegations, make sure that you don't shoot with models on your own. And it's not convenient and it's not necessarily cheap, but if this is a serious concern for you, shoot at a studio, book two models together, book a makeup artist, book a stylist, share shoots with another photographer, so book a house together and each shoot, mm -hmm. up, one shoot upstairs, one shoot downstairs. Just have other people around should you encounter the same sort of bad actor that I was unlucky enough to encounter. And I guess the third point is never pay anyone in advance. <laughs> yeah, totally. What I learned from it, actually, I had to keep a paper trail. Yeah. Because I never had... I'd always deleted emails because I like to throw things away. Right. I deleted everything until I heard that from you. Right. And yeah, now okay. I keep so, everything. So I've, I've always done that, so that was never a problem. Yeah, so I do, indeed. But indeed, keep an organised paper trail... And the moment anything bad like this happens, print everything print it out. Print all out, yeah. Right now. So you've got a stack of stuff. So when, when we yeah. have had stalkers and things, before anything can get deleted, before accounts can get deleted, print, or it, all. Blocks, you know, print it all out. 
because then you've yeah. got a record and you can say to the police, here you go, make your own mind up. The other thing I would say, I think as a result of your experience and speaking to other photographers who've had somewhat similar experiences, is really look at the character of your model. You know, if there's someone who seems to have a very chaotic life, burns through friendships really fast, mm doesn't have a good word to say about anyone, you know, model or photographer, doesn't have a good relationship with anyone in their family, doesn't have any long-lasting friendships, that now is a, red, a, flag a red flag for me flag. in yeah, a way yeah, that yeah. once upon a time it probably wouldn't have been. And it's easier to do now because you can see them on social media. Yeah. They're always showing up, hating on somebody <laughs> who <laughs> um, yes. three weeks ago was their best, best buddy in the world. It's one of the ways I screen photographers, actually. I yeah. look at how they speak to the models they've worked with more than once on social media, right. and I find it incredibly illuminating. I'd like to end this oh story. Powell emailed me the day you had come home yes. from the police, and we met up. I took, I took you out for afternoon tea. Yeah, yeah, and we had a lovely... I bought you two cakes. I remember yeah. I thought he needs two cakes. Not wrong. No. no. And you also booked me. I think it was partly with the money that you got back from her. You booked me a little while later. And I remember thinking, what you need is for me to come up with the story. You need me to say, this is what I want you to do with me. Because I thought it might be for a while difficult for you to come up with ideas of how you were going to tie up a model having been accused of something like that. So we shot what is now bonded driving test on restrained elegance. And it was really, in some way, the beginning of our relationship. Yes. It's the first yeah. time we did anything off camera. It is, yeah. Yeah. It is. And I remember still that visceral happiness that you hadn't been handcuffed mm. because I couldn't have I couldn't have a doll my fancy being handcuffed. <laughs> No, I don't know that it had a particular damping impact on my creativity immediately. But as time has gone on, I would say it's a real dilemma. Because on the one hand, I really want to make sure that the model is shooting stuff that she's comfortable with. Yes. So on the one hand, I would really like the models to have a lot of input into what we shoot. Yes. But on the other hand, it is completely inappropriate to ask a new model oh, you've never you met into? before, what are you into, what are your it's sexual really hard, fantasies? It's really hard. It's really hard. But I see why, as a result of your experience, you are I, even more hesitant I'm even more than, hesitant than I was to say, oh, what are you into? Oh, yeah. tell me. <laughs> yeah, inhibition is the, one of the enemies of creativity. And it's one of the reasons, as a result, when I work with you before we were together and with other photographers, I, I try to tell them, if I feel safe, and as forthcoming as I can because I yeah. know it's very hard for It makes a you huge a, difference. Yeah. yeah, it does make a huge mm -hmm. difference because there's a million things that I could shoot and I, I don't want to shoot things that are uncomfortable. So like no. the reason that for 20 years I've shied away from shooting anything that's really got much explicit sexual content is not that I don't have those fantasies, is that I can't bear the idea of sending an email to a plumber, basically to my professional plumber. <laughs> do you like doing sinks best? Or do you like doing sinks? Yeah. So I hope that whether you're a photographer or a model, you would have found that kind of useful. And I hope in some ways, if you're a photographer, you find it somewhat comforting because although it is horrible, it was resolved because you were innocent. Yeah. It hasn't happened again. Yeah. Modifying a few things, like choosing models who've got a proven track record yeah. has minimised your risk. Yeah. So that, Powell got a wife out of it. Yeah. So it really is, it really is like its impact. Though it's still got a, a bit of emotional fallout, I would say if I were a more robust character, its impact on me would be absolutely zero, would be absolutely minimal. I feel pretty confident. So thank you, everyone. It's my birthday today. Shall we go and have some birthday cake? Yes. You can have two pieces if you like. Thank you. <laughs>